Okay, well, welcome back for another video. In this video, I'm going to briefly describe how to create a plane in the lathe. So when we're doing turning projects and we want to use the milling paths up here, uh, how, how do we use those, number one? And so we'll, so we'll actually do a, a tool path. We'll actually do two tool paths. And I'll create planes for both of them. Okay, so, well, let's get started. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my turning. And I have this command called C view. Now, this isn't the only way I can create a plane. I can actually do it the old-fashioned way by going to planes, doing dynamic and all that. But when I'm using a, a lathe, the lathe feature, I'm going to use C view because it just makes things easier. I can check them a lot easier. So I'm going to click on that and you'll kind of see here how you can go through. It's almost like a wizard. So uh, the first thing I got to decide is, okay, what am I doing, right? What kind of plane am I creating? Am I create, creating it on the right face here, the back face, which would be this one, or the cross? So in other words, am I drilling through this radially? or milling on it radially? Um, the answer to that is yes, it's a cross. An axis substitution is just, um, could be a combination of something different. So I could have maybe another uh, angle on there somewhere. But for this, we're going to do a cross. And the other question is, uh, do I want my construction plane perpendicular or parallel to the tool plane? Uh, or is it Swiss? It's not Swiss. so. Uh, we actually want this to be perpendicular, so we want the um, the plane to be perpendicular to the actual tool. And next, I need to select some sort of geometry uh, to let it know where it is rotated around that part. So, um, trying to look for something round here. So, if you can imagine this part, right? And I need to know where it is located around the circumference of that part. So I need to select something that kind of tells me that. Well, as you can see, I can't select anything on here. So really what I need to do is I need to create some sort of geometry. And by geometry, I mean wireframe geometry. So I'm going to escape out of there real quick. And I'm going to go to, oops, excuse me, wireframe. And I'm going to grab curve on one edge. And I'm going to grab... I'm actually going to do this square here. So I'm just going to grab that one. Now, you have to keep in mind that it's going to have to, it's going to have to be in two axes. So if I were to look at this from the top, right, it's actually moving in both axes. So that it moves in the x-axis and in the y-axis if I were to look at this like it was a mill. Now in here, you can see it's, it's moving in the z-axis and the d-axis, since it's a lathe. Uh, if I were just to pick a line, it's not going to know how to tilt that plane around that line. That line only defines that this, so like if it was creating it, let's let me reorient re, uh, this. So if I were to pick that line, it's only going to know that the line it has, has to be level to that line, but this direction is not defined. By defining something that moves in both axes, I can easily define that. So uh, that's why I'm picking this arc. I can't really pick just the line. So I'm going to pick that, and I could do this whole thing if I wanted to, and then just use that for my geometry to select when I do my toolpath. But I'm just going to use solids for that, so I don't need to do that. So I'll go back into my turning, pick my C view, uh, go to cross, perpendicular, and I'm going to select this line. So it's 120 degrees from zero. I'm going to display my tool. Okay, so you can see here that the tool does not look right. So this is one of the biggest reasons why. Now, I, I have my plane wrong, too. I think I don't think I said that right. Um, see, my plane there is that little square. Uh, you can see that this does not look right. So what that means is it's 120 degrees the opposite way. So I need to add 180 to that or subtract 180 to that, either one. So I'm going to escape, and I'm just going to add 180 to that. So 180 to that is obviously 300 degrees. So I'm going to display it now, and there you can see now my tool looks like it's oriented correctly. Uh, now I just need to make sure that my plane is parallel display. There we go, parallel to my tool plane. So I always mix those two up. Um, 
Always. Oh, for some reason. And that's that's the great part about this displaying it is that if you mix them up um, the way that they're oriented, you can easily see it and it gives you this visual. So there we go. So that's that's the plane that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to hit check. And I'm going to create that plane. And that plane should be created somewhere here and called just plane. Now... I don't see it. Now, what may happen here is that if I already have a plane that is made for this, then it won't create another one. So one of these here, and I know which one it is, it's a large square, and you can actually see it right here. You can see how it's oriented the Z's up. So that's the one we're going to work on. So I'm going to make sure this is on my top plane. So when I create these, I want my WCS to be on my top, and I want my C, my construction plane, and my tool plane to be on the plane that I'm going to be machining on. So once I've got those selected, I'm going to go to milling, and I'm just going to select a dynamic milling path, machining region. Uh, we're going to go to solids, and I'm going to select a loop, turn our space off that one, and hit check. Stay inside, looks good. Everything there looks good. Uh, tool, we will use a 3 8 flat end mill. I'm not going to worry about speeds and feeds for now since I'm just showing how to do this. We're going to make that zero, zero on the floor. Uh, normally I would reset a lot of these back feed rates and stuff, but again, I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with that right now. Depth, I'm going to select the bottom of this thing. So incrementally it's 0.3 deep. Um, I'm going to do an incremental top of stock and make that 0.1 positive. So it's going to be 0.1 above my plane there that I where you know this profile that I selected. Uh, feed plane also is 0.1, and um, also then I'm going to turn on my coolant, and there we go. So now I've created that milling path on there. And basically, you can do that with any of these mill paths. So essentially, you have the access to all the mill tool paths in the lathe. But you have to create that plane to do it. And the key for creating those is that you have your top for your WCS, and you have your um, construction and tool plane set to the plane that you want to machine on. I'm going to do one more. And I'm actually going to do this one here where you can see I'm kind of removing a lot of material, but I'm leaving a boss. Uh, so I'm gonna turn that actually on and go with rectangular boss. And you can see I already have, uh, have an outline here. And what I did was essentially I just kind of drew a boundary because if I pick dynamic, it's essentially just gonna mill everything there. Uh, if I have stock going back here, it's gonna try and mill all the way back. So what I did was just create a boundary so it doesn't mill all the way back. I could have probably just created one line, but uh, for some reason, i recycling this file. For some reason, at that time, I decided to draw a rectangle. Um, okay, so to do this, I'm just going to pick dynamic, and I'm going to do machining region. Of course, that is going to be this. And I'm going to hit check. And I'm going to do stay inside, and I'm going to do an avoidance region, which is going to be this, and I'm going to actually make that a solid. Select there, check, check, tool, it's going to be our 3 8 again, and cut parameters are all set, linking parameters, we're going to bring that down to the right depth. Uh, I can see it's incrementally 0.8 something from, uh, that doesn't look right. Hmm, let's double check that here. Let's see what we get there. I think that that is calling it from a different location. It doesn't seem like it's giving me an incremental depth there. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see what we get. So then we can kind of see and solve problem solve what's going on there. Uh, top of stock, we'll select this one, which is less for some reason. Um, I'll make this 0.5, and we'll just, we'll go with that for now and see what happens here. Oh, I'm on the wrong plane, that's why. 
Okay, so I'm actually glad that happened because uh, I overlooked it and I haven't done this in a while. So I was still on the other plane and it's creating it from here. So it was 0.8 something from here where I was selecting that point. Um, assuming that this is my zero plane and I was selecting a point over here. So rather than delete that toolpath, I can actually go in and I can change the plane here. So I'm just going to go into the plane and I know that I have a, um, a plane set up for this already. So we're just going to say that it is rectangular boss. Check, check, and hit check. And let's see if we can regen that. Okay, that might not be the one. Rectangular boss. So maybe it's a large rectangular boss. Let's go select the other one. Rectangular boss too. Oh yeah, that's the right one. I couldn't. Surprised I didn't notice that. Yeah, so there we go. Rectangular boss too. Check. And we're gonna like that a little better. Now we just gotta reset our linking parameters because they're goofy. Depth is going to be, oops, set the wrong spot there. Top of stock is going to be there. 0.1, and we'll make that 0.25. Oh, not absolute. We'll make that incremental. Check. And as you can see, it's coming down in, helixing down, and machining our parts. So let's take a look at that when we. Uh, Simulate. Now I'm simulating with um, round stock rather than having a piece of hex, uh, but you could just as easily extrude a piece of hex and use that as your stock as well. This still gives you the idea. So there we go. And, oh, it actually did show us the hex. So I do have a piece of hex work in there. So, uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, you can either email me, um, and uh, you can see me during my office hours, or, of course, you can always ask me during class if you have any questions.